Hello, dear friends and colleagues. Welcome back. In previous video, we have learned the normal CT anatomy of whole abdomen and pelvis. Now, in this video, I am going to give you few tips on how to interpret pathological CT scans. Before you start CT scan interpretation, there are few details to be checked and known, which are there on your CT film. So these details include the name and the age of the patient and the sex of the patient and also the date of the scan and the type of scan and the images uh, and the views, etc. So everything will be visible on that film or the console that you must check before you start reading the CT scan. While we interpret, we may follow any protocol, any system of interpretation, but I have taken a very easy mnemonic from a review article and it follows a simple four A's, three B's, two C's and one D. And first look for four A's, okay? So the first A is air. So S is for any abnormal air collection inside the abdominal cavity like pneumoperitoneum or intra mural bubble gas okay then the third category of air which is abnormal is the fluid gas level within collections so firstly the ct scan need to be assessed for pneumoperitoneum which is commonly associated with any emergency situation in surgical patient okay so pneumoperitoneum is a free gas in abdominal cavity and it is a sign of perforation this is a CT scan without any contrast enhancement and it reveals the pocket of inter, uh, extra luminal air here, okay, anterior to the liver beneath the right hemidiaphragm and scattered on the left side consistent with the free air, okay. So this is your pneumoperitoneum. And this is uh, another axial CT showing the free air, okay, in the pelvic cavity, in the whole pelvic cavity almost everywhere. And the pockets are also there in the near the sternum. So this is your sternum and anterior to sternum. There are there is a large pocket of air, uh, which in this case clinically correlated with a decapitous ulcer, leading to necrotizing fasciitis. Remember, not every pneumoperitoneum is pathological. For example, free air after laparoscopic surgery, which is reported in about 23% of post laparoscopic CT scan. And it may be visible up to three weeks post-operatively with only a small percentage of these patients requiring any kind of intervention for this finding. After pneumoperitoneum, check bowel wall for intramural air. So intramural means the air inside the bowel wall. So this is your bowel wall. This is the oral contrast which was given and then this is now deposited in this lumen of this bowel. Here also there is the air fluid level and you can see contrast, okay, residing uh, in the lumen. So uh, if you look at closely at the bowel wall, this is studded with lot of air pockets. So this condition is famously known as nomatosis intestinalis, okay, which appears as gas bubbles within the bowel wall. And that indicates the disruption in the integrity of bowel mucosa due to increased mucosal permeability. And that may happen in case of bowel ischemia, bowel wall necrosis, and uh, sometimes uh, in cases of infections as well. For example, if the patient is having infection with the gas forming bacteria, that may cause the air inside of uh, the bowel wall. That is nematosis intestinalis. In this CT scan, you may see uh, intramural bowel gas here, isn't it? And also you can see some abnormal branching pattern of air in the mesentery. So this is your mesentery. And uh, in the mesentery, you can see the air. So this is basically the branching pattern of air, which is mesenteric venous gas. Okay, and sometimes it is associated with the hepatic venous gas also. A portal venous gas. So this condition is suggestive of necrotic bubble walls and uh, this condition requires uh, surgery. Now in this picture 
as I was saying in the previous slide, uh, this picture also shows the branching pattern of air accumulated inside the liver, more on, more uh, in the peripheral rather than central region of the liver. Okay, so this this situation is also caused by necrotizing enterocolitis and inflammatory bowel disease, and also mesenteric ischemia and also perforated peptic ulcer, and sometimes due to trauma. So many conditions can lead to this kind of thing, which is called as portal venous gas. Okay. Now one should also check for air within the fluid collection in the form of an air fluid level or bubbles, as this can be a sign of gas forming bacteria. Okay. As you can see over here in this CT scan of abdomen showing a large amount of uh, fluid and air, the air fluid level, which is severely is distorting the retroperitone. Now, this is a retroperitone structure and you can see right, uh, right side there is a good kidney, left side there is no kidney at all. So probably this is a kidney which has filled with uh, so much of gas and necrotic material and this is nothing but emphysematous pyelonephritis. The diagnosis is emphysematous pyelonephritis and for this patient we did percutaneous nephrostomy immediately and the fluid was aspirated sent to microbiological culture okay which grew bacteroides fragilis now in this ct scan can you see there is a hypodensity in the lower part of the liver and there is some air pockets also okay gas bubbles patient had a history of hepatectomy okay and the patient underwent a percutaneous drainage whose culture was negative so this is a fluid here so here is uh, another ct scan which was done on eight post operative day and uh, this patient presented with fever rectal pain and prolonged anal discharge okay following rectal surgery so now you can see in this rectal perianal perianal region a lot of air okay a lot of air and collection also is there in, in the sagittal ct you can see some collection and air both okay so this is basically a uh, large uh, pelvic collection with air pockets uh, related to perianal abscess or pelvic abscess. Now look at the aorta. After you have finished with air, look at the aorta in the abdominal CT scan. It is important to follow the aorta from aortic valve if visible on a scan and down to the common iliac bifurcation. Okay, so now here you can observe this is the uh, vertebral body, okay, in the lumbar region. You can see either side of uh, lumbar vertebral body, this um, psoas muscle, okay. And uh, anteriorly, you can see this is your IVC and this is your aorta. In aorta, uh, there are two types of uh, uh, densities available, uh, visible. So, the peripherally, you can see high density and uh, inside you can see hyperdensity and this is a contrast uh, film okay so contrast has been taken very well by the aortic blood so this is actually true lumen the blood okay and this is probably the dilatation and also here you can see this is matching with the kidney uh, density and there is some oral contrast in the bubble you is visible here so this is a case of abdominal aortic aneurysm that is triple a and that has to be measured properly. The diameter of uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm is very important because uh, the diagnostic diagnosis is based on the diameter. For practical purposes, an AAA, that is triple A or a abdominal aortic aneurysm is diagnosed when aortic diameter exceeds three centimeter or is more than three centimeter. The most feared complication of triple A is the rupture okay so aneurysmal rupture which is a surgical emergency due to its high mortality so in case of uh, resection so that is another problem which you will observe in aorta so resection uh, the intimal flap is raised okay like this so in this picture you can see uh, the intimal flap was raised and, and then there, there was a creation of the false lumen usually false lumen is larger than the true lumen so that is called a tennis ball appearance, as you can see in this picture here. The so tennis ball appearance, and that is suggestive of the section. So there will be a true lumen which is smaller and a false lumen which is which will be larger. Okay, so that is typical of tennis ball appearance of aortic dissection. 
So currently, aortic dissection is most reliably detected on MRI. So MRI is the gold standard for the identification of aortic dissection. MRI has uh, sensitivity and specificity of about 98%. It is the most sensitive method of diagnos diagnosing aortic dissection and has similar specificity to the CT scan. Now we will talk about the third A, that is ascites. So check if there is any fluid in the abdomen and that fluid can be uh, either free fluid or it may be blood. So remember, if it is a large amount of fluid and if you think that this is blood, you, there will be drop in the hemoglobin in ABC or in the laboratory hematogram. Uh, Hemocrit will be lower and also there will be associated signs and symptoms of uh, hemoperitoneum. For example, there will be tachycardia and there will be um, hypotension. So hemodynamic instability will be observed in the large collection if you think if it is blood or hemoperitoneum. And if it is a free fluid, simply it could be either transudative or exudative that you can ascertain after doing the abdominal paracentesis and set it for the diagnostics. So this is a CT scan which shows large amount of fluid everywhere in the peritoneal cavity and there is some air anterior to this fluid okay there is a nice air fluid level here a large volume of intra-abdominal fluid without a compensatory hemodynamic response indicates generally ascites so it could be a transudative ascites or maybe exudative which we which we will be able to know only after uh, paracentesis and diagnostics if there is situs and with hemodynamic stability, as I was saying, think of blood always. To locate the bleeder, a specific CT signs may be uh, observed. For example, sentinel clot sign or extravasation of intravascular contrast material will be there uh, to locate for bleeder. But it is sometimes very difficult. So it, uh, advanced technology uh, can help here like um, RBC scan. So observing this CT scan. What you, what you can observe here is the hypodense lesions, okay? So this CT scan was taken after the blunt trauma of abdomen and you can see the hypodensity. It is basically a hemorrhagic contusion and uh, in this case, you can see the hemoperitoneum. So this is also a case of blunt trauma of abdomen and you can see uh, fluid around and that is actually a, and there is a crushed uh, posterior part of the, uh, liver okay so this is also a case of hem hemoperitoneum so uh, the fourth a is appendix so that is important to identify and it is identified as the blind ended appendage of cecum so this is your cecum on the right side and uh, which is quite dilated and anterior okay just uh, below the subcutaneous tissue and if you look at in the, uh, you know, posteriorly and posteromedially, there will be a blind pouch and that is usually appendix. Sometimes it is not visible properly. There will be a big, uh, you know, mass and also sometimes uh, peri-distinal fluid will be there in the, in this location posteriorly. And uh, this is the fat which you can see is very black, isn't it? This is all fat, mesenteric fat and abdominal fat. So the fat around the appendix, if it becomes gray, that is known as stranding, okay? So that is fat stranding and that is an important uh, sign of appendicitis. So always remember, we commonly do CT scan in, in case of appendicitis if we are not able to get a conclusive finding on ultrasound. So ultrasound is initial, moderate your choice and if this is inconclusive and not giving you proper diagnosis, then probably you can perform CT scan. So remember the CT findings of acute appendicitis are dilated appendix with a diameter of uh, more than six millimeter. There will be wall thickening. There will be adjacent uh, fatty stranding, mesenteric fatty stranding, and there will be mesenteric lymph nodes and appendicolith, that is the hard mass inside the appendix that will be visible as hyperdense lesion. And, uh, and you can see some peri-intestinal fluid also. Now, we will talk about three Bs. So in the three Bs, the so first B is bowel. So in bowel, it is very important to observe various pathologies. For example, the perforation, dilatation, obstruction, infarction, malignancy, so many things, okay? 
So the bowel needs to be followed from pylorus to the rectum in a systematic manner. So you have to observe all the you know cuts of CT scan and uh, focus on whole of the bowel, small bowel and large bowel. Every every you know all parts of bowel should be uh, completely uh, visualized on all these scans and cuts of CT scan very carefully for the perforation and for uh, the dilatation and bowel wall pathologies etc. So there are common causes of acute abdomen in which the most common intestinal causes of acute, acute abdomen are acute appendicitis, small bowel obstruction, large bowel obstruction, bowel ischemia, etc. In bowel obstruction, the most common type of bowel obstruction is the small bowel, which is about 80% of all mechanical intestinal obstruction. And remaining 20% are usually the large bowel obstruction. So bowel obstruction is considered to be present on CT scan if there is uh, distended bowel loops which are seen proximal to the collapsed loop so that you have to see so initially you will see the large uh, what you call distended uh, bowel loops and uh, in the later part of the image you, you will see the collapsed bowel loops so that is indicative of bowel obstruction and uh, remember that CT is more sensitive than radiographs and that will demonstrate the cause of bowel obstruction in about 80% of cases. So always examine bowel wall for the thickness okay, and enhancement and also observe the mesenteric fat stranding which will be visible on acute uh, for in a case of acute mesenteric ischemia. See in this CT scan we have not given any positive iodinated contrast orally and we, we used just a neutral contrast, okay? So that is why it is good, uh, you know, nicely, uh, the, uh, the wall of the bowel is nicely seen. It is just inflamed and thick, okay? And uh, if you look at the mesenteric fat, it is all stranded, not visible well. Here, very thick intestinal wall, that is also suggestive of acute mesenteric ischemia and again you can see the mesenteric fat is not properly visible it is hyperdense and that is a stranding now another diagnosis which you should look for uh, in case of acute abdomen is acute diverticulitis especially in patients who are elderly so what are the ct findings in acute diverticulitis remember diverticula are small bulges okay or pockets that can develop in the lining of uh, the intestinal mucosa as you get older and CT shows uh, multiple diverticula in this case multiple diverticula can be seen and uh, there is some inflammation and uh, there is some you know uh, stranding of adjacent fat tissue also you can is visible here here it is uh, some fat stranding and you can see some uh, you know bowel wall air also and a lot of diverticula visible so that is one more another diagnosis in case of elderly uh, when you are doing a CT scan for acute abdomen. Now after bowel is completed, go for bladder and we do not just see bladder, we, we look at whole of the urinary tract and urinal system. So kidney, urinary tract and bladder. Okay, all three we will examine that is KUB. So look for signs of a stone in the lumen of uh, renal pelvis and uh, here. So in this case, you, the renal parenchyma is just okay, but there is some hematoma here. So that is actually a renal laceration in case of post-traumatic uh, post uh, CT scan. And you can see uh, there is a lot of uh, hypodensity around uh, this kidney and that is nothing but hematoma. Okay, so this is all of hematoma perirenal hematoma. So CCT is considered the study of choice in complicated acute pyelonephritis. So infections can also be diagnosed on CT scan, which can detect the parenchymal abnormality. So here you can see some hyperdense lesion in the uh, parenchyma of the kidney. And sometimes you can see air also. So this air is visible in the parenchyma and that is suggestive of acute uh, Amphysematous pyonephritis. In this CT, what's abnormal with the kidneys? Can you, you make out? So here you can see some, you know, something bilaterally. That is your drains. So pay, uh, nephrostomy catheters are visible. 
here also you can observe and uh, what happened after some time in this is the post operative ct scan there is a perirenal collection okay so that is your anteriorly there is perirenal collection uh, probably this is urinoma so this the diagnosis in this case is urinoma so normal kidneys take up the contrast quite well as you can see this is normal kidney which has taken contrast quite well but inside it, you can see there is a well defined uh, low attenuation uh, density with a thick irregular wall or pseudo capsule so that is nothing but it is a sequela of acute pyelonephritis so probably this is suggestive of uh, renal abscess so this collection is basically a renal abscess what do you see here? So this is again air and the hyperenuation and contrast has not been taken very well by this uh, right kidney. So this is pyelonephritis and uh, emphysematous. Air, so air is visible, that means emphysema. So this is acute uh, emphysematous pyelonephritis, which we should require. Um, don't forget to uh, assess the urinary bladder, which should be examined for the irregularity of its wall. Uh, which may be suggestive of cancer. The bladder wall thickness can also be seen in case of cystitis, which is uh, in this case, in the CT scan, very well visible. But that is your cystitis. After bowel and bladder, look inside the liver uh, and also pancreas. That is your third B. So look for the pathology of the common bile duct and hepatic duct and gallbladder and pancreas. So common diagnosis which you could make out on the, the CT scan uh, are the corridocolithiasis, obstruction from external compression such as pancreatic malignancy or a sphincter of body structure or biliary sepsis. Okay, all these diagnoses and sometimes cholecystitis or a calculus cholecystitis are also visible. So now look at this CT scan. In this CT scan, which is contrast enhanced, you can see the spleen is well contrast enhanced and you can see aorta is also has taken very good contrast. So that is your art arterial phase, okay, arterial phase. Uh, and uh, portal vein is also a little bit visible. It is also good, uh, nice, no, not very well enhanced, but okay. Oh, so this portal vein is there and uh, you can see uh, just adjacent to portal vein, there are hypoattenuation. These are actually the bile ducts which are enlarged. Usually uh, the bile ducts will not be visible in the normal CT liver okay but in this case uh, hypodensities are visible and they have a proper you know location which is just adjacent to portal vein and a branching pattern is visible so this is basically intra hepatic biliary dilatation bile duct dilatation so that usually happens in case of obstructive jaundice or surgical jaundice now in this ct scan this is another ct scan which is a contrast enhanced and you can see uh, aorta and uh, IVC visible, but this is the liver phase of contrast, okay, and contrast enhancing the hepatic phase. Observe the gallbladder. What is abnormal here? So you can see around the gallbladder, there is some fluid. So that is your pericystic fluid or pericholecystic fluid without any gallstone inside. So, and this gallbladder is also not distended. There is no intrahepatic uh, or extrahepatic biliary uh, dilatation. Okay. And uh, so diagnosis is a calculus cholecystitis, which is an acute necroinflammatory disease of gallbladder, quite common in case of critical or acute illness. Now in the CCT scan, what do you observe? So there is some air inside the liver, especially uh, inside the, the enlarged bile duct. You can see the bile duct, which is enlarged. So intrahepatic bile dilation is visible inside that there are some air bubbles and some branching pattern is also observed, which is more, more of central. So this the, the diagnosis is pneumobilia. Okay, that happened uh, because of emphysematous cholangitis. It is usually present after ERCP procedure also. So it is important to differentiate pneumobilia from portal venous gas. So gas within the portal venous uh, system tends to be more peripheral and just uh, subcapsular. Uh, okay, so this is your liver capsule. So just below the capsule, there will be branching pattern of air. So uh, that is your portal venous gas. In case of pneumobilia, what will happen? 
the uh, biliary gas is uh, anti dependent and typically it is the left lobe of the liver and also it is a central origin now come to pancreas so pancreas is visible just anterior to the aorta so there is no contrast oh, uh, this is ncts uh, showing the pancreas which is uh, swelled up and there is peripancreatic uh, stranding is very, very well visible okay so that is uh, actually acute pancreatitis so diagnosis is acute edematous pancreatitis now look at it uh, this ct scan which is actually contrast enhanced as you can see the kidneys have taken the contrast quite well and here you can see um, the uh, diffuse pancreatic enlargement with indistinct uh, pancreatic margin okay because of inflammation and uh, there is surrounding um, so this is indistinct pancreatic margin and uh, you can see some uh, retroperitoneal fat strand that refers to abnormally increased attenuation in the fat so this is and and this part of the pancreas can you see so that is your necrosis which has not taken up contrast well okay so basically this is a necrosed part and and in this case the diagnosis would be acute necrotizing pancreatitis so this is your pancreatic fat necrosis now look at here the ct shows non enhancing part of pancreatic head and neck okay and a body and with the uh, normal enhancing tail so this is normal to only tail is visible in this case and you can see some uh, this is your gallbladder and you can see hyper density in this uh, the base of the what do you call the root of the gallbladder so uh, this is basically biliary stones so the cause of this acute pancreatitis is the biliary as i said this is non enhancing part so this is basically necrosis so this is the, the diagnosis is acute necrotizing pancreatitis now look at here this is also just anterior to aorta anything any big structure anterior to aorta usually pancreas and you can see uh, two cavities which are filled with the fluid okay they are uh, walled uh, of necrosis this is the complications after acute pancreatitis acute necrotizing pancreatitis and this is actually a pseudocyst okay walled of necrosis leading to pseudocyst about two c's cancer and cutaneous that is skin okay so the, the first c is the cancer in acute admission in acute care medicine cancers are usually diagnosed based on their sequelae okay so cancers are not usually primary diagnosis when cancer complicates and give rise to acute uh, clinical signs and symptoms then only we do ct scan we find some complications due to cancer for example bowel obstruction in colorectal malignancy okay and sometimes we can see the obstructive jaundice in case of liver malignancy or biliary malignancy or pancreatic uh, tumors so all these cases actually have complicated that is why we are getting the signs on ct scan now come to skin soft tissue and muscles so in this ct scan what you can observe so here there is some abnormality adjacent to the left kidney okay so you can see uh, this is the vertebral body and uh, either side of vertebra there is a muscle so this is basically muscle where you can see the uh, hypo uh, density or attenuation in the dens uh, density and here also some attenuation so this is basically abscess okay so that is your psoas abscess fine and one more ct scan i think this is uh, this was done after a few days and you can see very well organized uh, psoas abscess so this is a ct scan of the abdomen uh, showing some problem over here in the peri uh, superficial part of anterior abdominal wall okay so that is nothing so this is actually a muscle which has been swelled up here and this is uh, the uh, uh, rectus sheath uh, hematoma so that may occur spontaneously as a result of anticoagulation administration and sometimes due to blunt trauma also so rectal sheath hematoma don't forget this especially when you are giving a patient anticoagulant agent uh, clixane etc so this is your rectal sheath hematoma finally we are going to go for d and it stands for doctor's intervention and look for surgical wound in the ct in this abdominal ct scan there are 
air pockets around subcutaneous uh, tissue okay so this is some air and there is some swelling also uh, in this subcutaneous tissue collection in the anterior abdominal wall and also there is some collection here so this is all abnormal okay so probably this is seroma which occurred and also there is some uh, abdominal uh, wound okay so this is a common post operative problem now look for any signs of drains or catheters within the abdominal cavity so there may be drains kind of biliary drain or ptbd or cystic or post operative drains these can be signs of active pathology and may need to be investigated further as iatrogenic causes of patient's presentation for example if the drain is blocked so there will be collection inside but outside the drain will not be draining anything okay so uh, probably that may be related uh, to the blocked drain or sometimes the tip of the drain may not be in the right place or okay so it will not be draining properly so it will require repositioning so multiple types of you know drains can be seen on the ct scan so this is another uh, ct film that is your sag um, coronal section and here you can see under end of liver there is one hyperdense so this is your stent look for any abscess formation in the surgical wound always so here there is a uh, anterior abdominal wall there is some air also and uh, this is your stitch probably and uh, surgical wound collection surgical wound abscess now look at this ct scan what do you see here now this the ct scan was done in a patient who is post lap cholecystectomy and developed a fever with raised wbc so here you can see some air at surgical side and fluid around the liver which is most probably due to bile leak and this is complication of biliary surgery so in all cases of biliary pancreatic or hepatic surgery you could see this kind of picture so usually bile leaks present as a bile in drain left in c2 post laparoscopic cholecystectomy or biliary peritonitis this is again a post operative ct scan in 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 patients uh, uh, who started having fever and localized abdominal swelling and uh, the ct is with the oral contrast was given to rule out obstruction they found this low density mass with spongy form appearance with gas bubbles inside okay so diagnosis is gossy bipoma or cotinoid okay this is another ct scan which show the same thing but there is some uh, radio opaque marker so this could be uh, nowadays uh, all gauze and sponges are provided with some radio opaque marker which may be visible even on x ray on the plain radiograph okay so remember this also as a differential diagnosis in a patient who is having fever and uh, abdominal swelling okay and he is not getting well or wbc is high now this is a ct pelvis showing two fluid filled cystic structures okay which compress the bladder in between giving it a an our glass appearance so this is our glass appearance of bladder and this ct scan was performed post operatively after robot assisted lap radical uh, prostatectomy okay which has complicated to pelvic lymphocele so these are actually pelvic lymphocele so that's all i think i have collected i have given you a lot of information about the abnormal ct scan so uh, there is there are some summary points always start pre interpretation checks including patients particulars and date of scan a systematic approach using a b c d mnemonic would be easy to perform and hence will clinch most of the important problems in ct scan in critical care settings especially interpretation of ct scan depends on indications for which it was ordered okay so you have to be focused because you don't have time in acute uh, care areas uh, for a prolonged ct interpretation you have to always ask yourself some questions okay that what are main clinical issues and how a ct scan interpretation can resolve them in order to guide your management so that is important question you must ask every time when you are reading a ct scan of abdomen 
So CT scan is the gold standard for follow-up after abdominal surgery and diagnosis of post-operative complications. You should remember that. Do not delay, you know, the scans. Uh, uh, because I understand that this is difficult uh, to shift a patient to CT room. But if you are going to get a useful information which can guide your management, which can, you know, turn your management uh, direction, then probably you should do it, okay? And probably uh, we require more and more studies to, um, uh, to testify or to uh, establish the role of CT scan in acute care areas. I couldn't find much of the studies while I was preparing this, uh, uh, this video. So I urge all the intensivists who are also researchers to look into this area as well, the critical care radiology. And last thing is when you are uh, when you are on CT console, try to change the window to the lung window uh, if you are thinking of pneumoperitoneum. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you so much for your attention. Kindly subscribe to this channel and also uh, comment. Comment is more important for me so that I can uh, uh, I can improve on myself. Uh, you know, in delivering more useful contents to all of you.